kick a field goal from 65 yards if he wants to, especially in perfect conditions. And, um, yeah, I'm not buying that, that whole he's injured thing. Really not buying it. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you so much. No, Tom bud. Murphy. You thank, thank you. Uh, diehard Boston co-host one Patriots place. Um, yeah, I've, I've loved having you on and I'm, I'm, I, we, we got to talk again sometime during the off season, but, uh, thanks for coming on all these times. And it's always been a great talk. No, it has been, man. It's been my pleasure. And thanks for asking me on take care Pittsburgh. All right. It's Super Bowl week. And here to talk on the Ram side is Derek Ciapala. He is co-founder of Rams talk. How are you, sir? Oh, man, it's it's been a busy, busy week, an exciting week, and I'm actually just wanting this game to get here, man. It's taking forever. It's Oh, my why, goodness. Why does there have to be two weeks in between games? I mean, you know, there's there's no need for, for this two-week uh, period. Just just one week is fine. Just Yeah, let, let's just get it on. Well, you know, normally I'd say yes, but after all the garbage that happened after the NFC Championship game, I'd say, you know what, um, I'm glad it happened. And, you know, I think it really exposed the Pro Bowl for being a fraud that is, too. But that's a different, that's a different story, you know. Oh, the, but, pro, um, the Pro Bowl is such a joke. Like, why? Yeah, why well, you know, it's it's so these dumb. guys, the game has become so physical that at this point you're not going to risk your body out there for a Pro Bowl game. Do you know what they should do? NFL honors nice. Just go out there and call each Pro Bowl team out there, honor them that way, and – and send them on their way. Don't put them on the field anymore. It's just, why? Do skills competition. Sure, skills competitions are fun. But at this point, why even do the game? A skills competition would be a lot of fun. You're right. It's not really a game. It, they're not even trying. You're right. It's, it's you know, football's a hard game. And why are you going to go out there and hurt yourself? And, I mean, I know a few years ago they were just, they were so mad that, that they weren't trying that they, they were going to stop the whole thing. It's like, what is this? There's there's so well, many other things they could do. You're right. Skills sure. competition, an award ceremony, whatever. There's you, you want your ratings. You could get them different ways. I would love a skills competition. I would love like a well, they, you know well, like a fast thing, but they already do. or something like that. They already have one. They have one. It's just not talked about a whole lot. So yeah. and, and the other part of it too is because you're doing you're doing it now before the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl teams they came and take part. So you're missing the Rams and Patriots players there. Every um, every sport, their all star game, they have some kind of skills competition that's like almost as as big as the game. You know, the NBA is the uh, the slam dunk competition, or the you know the NHL just had a whole bunch of um, you know skills things, and it's like. You could do that. I mean, you could you could build it as yeah. Who's the fastest football player? Who's the most accurate? But, who's the blah blah? There's so many ways you could do it besides stupid. Who who cares about who's who's going to win between the AFC and NFC? But they do. But that's the thing. So I'm trying to say they do a skills competition, but they don't they don't publicize it at all. They already have it. It's on yeah. the NFL Network. It's on ESPN. They show the skills competition. They just don't make a deal out of it. To me, make a deal out of it. Right. Right. I mean. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> but on to the on to the actual game that the, the game sure. that counts. Well, the, the whole uh, reason we're here, right? Yeah, the whole reason we're here. Um, I are, do you think the Patriots being at the Super Bowl every darn year? And as a as a fan of the Steelers, I'm gonna I'll uh, I'll apologize for the rest of the AFC. Sorry, we we failed again. Um, do you think that's a factor that to them it's just another game and for the Rams it is such a spectacle and you know like, you know, is, is, could the stage be too big for them oh it's a multifaceted question well on the Patriots side I would say um, I think after being there nine times uh, over the course of a nearly 20 year period I, I think there has to be some sort of shift men- mentally for it. you may not even notice it may be subtle but when you've been there enough times the, the wonder and the excitement of it kind of gives way to being just a, the big game the whole reason you're there and you saw that and how they get off the plane they're all dressed in shirts and ties they're all, all very business-like even belichick was in a shirt and tie the rams show up in blue jumpsuits <laughs> <laughs> they just show up in these royal blue Rams throwback color jumpsuits. You got bump, you got, you got 
uh, Wade Phillips showed up with his dad's 1970s cowboy jacket, which I was mean, awesome. It, it was epic, and it was really a really neat throwback to his dad. His dad wore the same thing, the same darn thing, and it was a really neat throwback to him. Um, it, but so for the Patriots, I, there has to be twofold. You know, you have that you lost last year. You want to kind of make up for that loss. So there's going to be a little bit of drive there. But to me, overall, it'll be really hard emotionally, mentally to come back after nine, after eight times and be locked in like you would as, you know, uh, people who have been there once or twice or three times. And, and on the flip side for the Rams, normally I would say, yeah, you know, for your first time there, you only have a couple players on the roster who have Super Bowl experience. And what I would say to that is that's why those two weeks off helps them. One. Um, and two, this is a Rams team that has proven time and time again their character. And what I mean by that is you can go back – to the Jeff Fisher days. And I mean, this team has had talent for years. Don't let the records fool you. They've had talent for years, but they've lacked so much maturity and they've lacked so much character on the field and lacked poise. And, and um, well, they would, they would go into games and just dumb penalty, dumb penalty, not be able to handle pressure situations. They, this is a team that should have played off contender three, four years ago. They've had players that good in the roster for that long. And then Sean McVay comes in, and they completely change the culture of that franchise. They build this idea that, you know, because what it was, it was a bunch of selfish people. There was a lot of selfish players in that team, and they instantly put in this this culture. And it's so, it, it's so cliche in a lot of ways, the we, not me, trust the process. But they mean it. And that's what they live by. And ever since then, whenever this team has come up against – a challenge and they've taken their knocks and then they did it. They lost the wild card game last year and, and uh, they come out this year and they lose that tough game in New Orleans the first time around. They go to, to Chicago in the cold and they look horrible. They look horrible. Philadelphia, they get beat and they're getting beat bad for three quarters before they come back in that game and make it look decent. Every time they face one of those challenges, they've come back better. The Dallas game, when they go to the Dallas game and Dallas is, is running, you know, they expected to run all over them. They're expecting the Rams to kind of just fold over, you know, a, a stadium filled with half Cowboys fans. Look, A, the Cowboys fans didn't even show, okay, like the media portrayed they did. But B, um, they ran for 273 yards on the Cowboys, a defense that was supposed to be able to stop them. They couldn't stop them. They go next week back to New Orleans. New Orleans is supposed to, you know, the, the, they can't hear each other talk there. It's their home team. New Orleans is nearly unbeatable at home. They're getting beat bad 13 nothing. They can't, they have a helmet malfunction for Jared Goff. They can't get their signals across. They can't hear each other. And they dominate the last quarters of the game. They win. And if they don't, you know, people want to argue, well, look, the Rams, um, they were gifted that win. Look at the stats in the first quarter. Look at the stats the last three quarters. And there you go. Rams, they earned it. Yeah, um, you know, the, the, there was one point where Goff was actually running to the wide receivers and giving them, telling them the plays or whatever. Because I, I didn't know about the helmet um, malfunction. That that makes sense now. But uh, yeah, I thought I thought that was just the uh, the power of the Saints uh, crowd that they were so loud that they couldn't hear. You, you know the crazy thing about this, Joey, that is. Um, a buddy of mine called this because we've seen it happen in New Orleans before. He said, watch, his helmet's going to malfunction first quarter. Guess what happened? First drive of the game, Jared Goff's helmet malfunctions. Wow. I, I kid you not, I can show the screenshots. <laughs> it's like Because weird things happen in New Orleans. Weird, weird things happen down there. And so what we really want to try and say, and I know I'm rambling a little bit, is the character of this team has been – proven time and time again. And that's why I'm not so concerned about the Super Bowl. I think if anything, the way the the way the game ended in New Orleans, the constant questioning about the officials' calls, um, the con you know, the then earlier this week, the, the Adam Sheffer coming out with the whole report that, well, we're not saying that these four referees from the Saints Rams game that live in South, you know, Southern California were were biased, but hey, guess what? They live in Southern California. I mean, I think that stuff really has turned to motivate this team and focus them in 
in a situation where otherwise they might be blinded by someone's bright lights. And so I think you're going to see a, a team that will, I'm guessing the Rams will start slow on Sunday. They usually do start a little slow. And they're going to, you know, there'll be some nerves. But uh, I think by a second quarter, you're going to see a settled in football team. I think the key to the game might be just surviving that the that first either that first quarter or that first you know part of the part of the game where there is there might be nerves and if they could survive that then then they'll be fine because it sounds like they they always finish strong. They you know they have become a team that really like last year they were purely a second half team. Uh, this year they've kind of become a team that really pulls together second and third quarter and kind of has holds on the fourth quarter, which drives me nuts sometimes. But one th- another thing about this team is that defense, they drive you nuts because they are really a bend but don't break defense. But all of a sudden, come fourth quarter, they'll pick up a turnover out of nowhere. That's how they, you know, the Chiefs scored 51 points on them. And in the end, it was two late interceptions by that Rams defense that saved them. They find a way. Yeah, yeah. And you know, speaking of the Rams defense, I think the 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 number one matchup of the game is that Rams defensive line against the uh, the Patriots offensive line. If they could get pressure on Brady, that's the key to beating Brady. And yeah, he gets the ball off quick, but. Still, if you're getting in his face, he's he's not going to be as effective. Well, that's the tough part is, is Brady gets the ball out an average of every two and a half seconds. You know, you have two and a half seconds to get to him against a, you know, this Patriots offensive line has only given up 21 sacks in 18 games this year. So, you, and the Rams pass rush has been very good at the middle, but let's just say less than good. On the edges. So it's not a favorable matchup to the Rams. The one thing the Rams do have for them is that matchup right there at the center and guard position for the Patriots. They have struggled at times on inside rushes. And they got to figure out what to do now because Ndamukong Sue's actually come on the last three games. He's He was a, he was basically a waste of cash for much of the year. And then he came, he finally figured it out. And the same for Michael Brockers next to him. All of a sudden, this team is is figuring this thing out on the front on the front line, and Dexter Fowler Jr., the guy they traded for, has been really coming on these last two games as well. So I I look at this and go, the matchup doesn't look good on paper, but the Rams are playing better than the stats show right now, especially in those situations. Yeah, and I think another thing the Patriots are doing is they're relying pretty heavily on the on the run, at least uh, the past few games with Sonny Michel. So if they could shut down that run game at the very least and maybe force uh, Brady to throw, I, yeah, I think I think that's the key. I mean, even when the the Patriots played the uh, Steelers in Pittsburgh, he didn't. They, they they made they made Brady look uh look mortal, so it's it's possible to get to him and it's possible to uh to um to stop him. So uh yeah, I think <laughs> I think if they could somehow do that, I think that's uh, that that that's going to really help the Rams. The only thing that concerns me too about it is you you know the the Ram this Rams team is so much better than they were in December, and it's only this is only a month and a half ago really. And the Patriots are too. And we can talk about the Patriots Steelers game. And yeah, the Steelers made them look mortal. And honestly, the Steelers should have beat them by more than they did. You know, the Steelers, in a lot of ways, kept the Patriots in that game. Uh, but they're, they are still much better now than they were. And that is concerning to me as well. You know, the, what also concerns me is the short passing matchup. The Rams have had issues throughout the year in that, you know, seven to nine, seven to 10 yard intermediate range Kamara burned them all third quarter on their Saints touchdown drive last week or two weeks ago and if the Rams do not get up there and really knock these guys off their routes they're going to what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of time possession from from the Patriots you're going to have them doing their getting their game where they have 94 plays that they had against the Chiefs and the Rams will be in trouble the Rams need to wear them out and not let the Patriots wear you know wear the Rams out and so 
knocking those guys off the 